question, raise your hand. How are we doing? Anyone still downloading Node? So while you guys are downloading that, there are a couple of things that I also wanted to talk about when it came to um, Firebase. So Firebase is, you know, they, they, their goal when they came out with the Firebase portion of Involve, when uh, Andrew Lee and James Templin came out with that, um, their, their goal was to be able to create a back-end service that would allow developers to spin up an entire application in the time that it took to ride a bus from Palo Alto to San Francisco. And I actually Google mapped it today just to double check. It's about 45 minutes when you don't have any traffic, about an hour to an hour and a half at least <laughs> when there is traffic, um, which you can count on pretty much always being traffic. Um, so just think about that. Like, We've all been through the junior core, right? We've all been through, uh, you know, you guys might have taken advanced web dev or Android or, or iOS or worked on any other development projects, but the idea of spinning up an entire backend, including authentication and authorization and a database, having that all done in an hour to then be able to just focus on coding on the front end and getting your creation up, I mean, that's, that's amazing to me. And so their, their hallmark feature is quick and easy. Um, so, that being the case, the Firebase team has published a couple of uh, really interesting repositories and libraries uh, for, for API usage. Um, if you're looking at using Angular, if you guys are big Angular devs, there is a library for um, interacting with Firebase and Angular. It's called Angular Fire. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, this is maintained by the Firebase team. I could be wrong on that. Um, and this is updated. It makes their normal JavaScript API, which is what we're going to be using in this class, even easier if you're doing Angular. Uh, the same thing with React Fire. Um, you know, they've got React bindings to make this super simple for storing all of your Firebase stuff in your React state and being able to manipulate it quite easily. Um, personally, I'm not a big fan of React Fire, specifically because you guys are gonna be seeing in the project that you're downloading. Um, ES6 is amazing. Uh, ECMAScript 2015 or ES6 is kind of the next generation of JavaScript. And React Fire, is, since it's a mix-in, it doesn't really play well with um, ES6 classes and things like that. So we're gonna be using, and plus it's also really great just to understand their base JavaScript APIs. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this class is using their JavaScript APIs. Uh, anyone having any issues doing any other installs? Uh, Did you list the four things we need to install? Yes, again? yeah. So it's Node, NPM, 
Uh, npm is installed with Node, okay. so that gets t that taken care of. Make sure you have Git, and then you're going to clone the, the repo, yeah. and then just run npm install. Oh, okay. Thanks. Yep. Yeah? So, when you run npm install, can you kind of like run through what it's doing? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So, this is the project here, um, and I'll make this bigger right now. This is going to be a little bit bigger here. You guys see that? Is that okay? Looks good from here. Cool. So, this is a package.json file. Um, for anyone that's not familiar with Node projects, a lot of your Node projects are managed through via a package.json file. Um, so, when you install a Node package, uh, you can run, over here I've got on, on the right hand side my terminal here. Um, so if I say I want to npm install something down here at the bottom, let me actually make this bigger as well. Um, I can choose to install a, a node package. And when I install a node package, it stores it in a folder called node packages, which is actually in this, uh, just stored directly in whatever directory you're in. So right here, I've got my node modules folder in this, in my project directory. You're not gonna see that in um, my editor on the side here, because my editor automatically ignores anything that is in my git ignore file. And if you look at the git ignore file, we're ignoring node modules. We don't want to upload a bunch of modules when all of you can install it on your machine. So when you run npm install without any anything else here, like if I just say npm install, that immediately looks for a package.json file in whatever directory you're in, and it runs through these dependencies and dev dependencies, and it installs any uh, dependencies that you have saved there. So if I wanted to add a new package to my package.json file, I could say npm install some package dash dash save or dash dash save dash dev and that would then add a line in my dependencies file right there for me which so then when that is downloaded by anyone else or cloned or anything or pulled down you can just simply run npm install and you'll get all the right versions of all of your packages it's very similar to django or to any python application where you have a pip requirements file and you say pip install dash r and then the name of the file and it'll install all your packages for you. So, any other questions on that? Nope, cool. So, now that we got this open here, let's dive a little bit into the code. Uh, I'm assuming there are probably still a couple people working on getting it downloaded, but... Is there anyone who wants to follow along who's not ready to proceed? So what are you still looking cool. at? Just your okay, just game engine downloading? Yeah. And mine won't add. Wait, sorry, npm install git? Um, just npm install, npm oh, install won't oh, work really? if it's not adding to my path. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry Windows users, I am not a big help when it comes to Windows. How are you? I saw you raise your hand in the back there. Are you just doing? waiting for no? Okay. Absolutely. So what you're going to do is you'll pop over to um, you know this this repo here, and there should be something on here, clone or download, right here, right? So you can do this via SSH or HTTPS. Regardless, you just copy this uh, this URL that you'll find in there, and then you pop over to your terminal, and you can CD to whatever directory you want, 
once you're in there and so you this have, will be a directory that we've made for the project. Here. Right. You'll you'll make a directory for your project wherever you want to store this code, um, which hopefully you find useful. If not, remove it ASAP. Um, anyway, what you'll do is once you create that, you'll type git clone and you'll paste that URL, and that will then create a subdirectory called Colonial Messaging Service, and that is where you'll find all your code. Change into that directory before you install. Yes, yeah, you got a CD into Colonial Messaging Directory and then run npm install. same URL here and just say git remote add origin and then paste that URL <coughs> if the remote's not already on there. My recommendation would be just to clone it through git. You'll pull down all the branches and everything like that. And what I'm planning on doing with this, guys, in case you're, um, if you are interested in going back and, you know, reviewing it is we have the master branch right here, which is what I've created before class, and then I'm on a new branch for anything we're doing in class today for class day one, and then I'll have another branch for class day two, so you guys can kind of go back and see the steps that we had to lay it all out. Cool? Cool. All right, we get to move on. How are you guys feeling? Still need a little bit of time? No one's feeling? All right, perfect. Okay, so quick little rundown on Firebase. Um, so we're going to talk real quick about the code that I've laid out for you guys. And then from there, we're going to hop back. We've got a couple more slides to do, and then we'll get, get typing, all right? You're recording now? Yes, I am. Um, make sure I am. Yes, I am. So um, React, uh, for those that are familiar with React, uh, you guys feel free to call me out if I'm wrong on this. Um, but React is an awesome framework that Facebook released um, that for those that are familiar with Angular, it's just the views portion. You know, React was meant to be a view layer. It wasn't meant to be the entire, frankly, bloated framework that Angular has become, but rather just the view layer. And so for that, we need a couple of things. Um, in, in here, you'll notice we have a source directory and a public directory. And in our public directory, we have our HTML file. It's just single index.html file, which has got a couple of links in here. I've left a lot of this boilerplate in case you guys are interested in using it to check out your own uh, React projects or anything. But all you'll notice in this index.html file, if you actually like throw this into your browser, is it's blank, and it's got a single div in here with the ID of root, right? And uh, here you can have your links for uh, you know, fonts or you know, your, your favicon, anything like that. But that's all that are, there is in your public folder. And then in your source folder, uh, that's, where, that's where the magic's happening here. So you've got your index.js file, where you have some React DOM rendering going on. Now, like I said, this is ES6, so those that are really familiar with pre-ES6 JavaScript, um, you know, you're, you'd know, you probably be expecting some require statements or anything like that. ES6 introduced actual uh, native importing, which is great. It makes me feel much better about the code that I write. Um, but we're importing React. We've got a couple of package imports up top here. We're importing a CSS file just for general uh, styling. And then uh, you can ignore this. This is just based on the framework that I'm using for UI. We're using Material UI, so it'll have a nice little Google Material Design sheen. Um, but this is where it's all happening right here, is you're rendering out to, as the second, second argument here, that div with the idea of root, you're rendering out this main page component, right? It's wrapped in another component, but yet again, that's just UI theming. Don't, don't really care about that. But that main page component, we're importing it from our components folder. So as I'm talking about this, let's go ahead and pop over to your terminal. And if you want to run npm start, npm start will run a script that is uh, that Facebook gave us, which is really nice. So if you run that, um, it'll pop over and open up, it should at least open up a, a new page in your browser. 
um, which will show what the uh, you know app looks like. And this has hot reloading, so anytime you make any changes, it'll automatically reload the page. Um, it'll, it'll be nice like that. Is anyone not seeing this as as you type that in? And still loading. Oh, there. <coughs> Might take a little bit. Cool. Giving me some warnings, but. Yes, yeah, there are going to be some warnings in there, like, uh, you know, there, there are things that are, um, you know, used, which I've, I've set up some of this boilerplate in here, which on the side here, you'll see some ESLint warnings. Um, ESLint is awesome if you don't use it. If you're a regular JavaScript writer and you don't use ESLint, look into it. It's great. ESLint will give you warnings and help you, especially if you're on a team, to write consistent code. Um, and there are some things in here that, uh, you know, I've imported that we're not using yet that we'll get to today. Um, so. Other than the warnings, everyone good? Good. So let's dive into our components. So this, we've got this main page component here. Let's go ahead and open up this main page component. And we've got about 60 lines of code in here. And uh, with React, using ES6, we declare a class which extends the component, which is from the React package. Right? So we have a class that's inheriting from component. And there are a couple of uh, things in here. The main thing that we're, con that we're concerned with is this render function. Render is actually what's spitting out the HTML that, that React generates on the page for us. And so from this function, which is a built-in function, React will grab that class and it will render that for you. Um, we've got a single div with the class name of main page. We've got a top bar. Now top bar is a component, as along with other components that I've imported here that I've built that we'll get into over here. And all this is is a material, material UI app bar that's been customized with a couple of things. Um, yet again, those that aren't familiar with ES6, all this is is, is an arrow function. It's just a, a shorthand way of writing a component uh, that does not need any state. It's a stateless functional component. And you'll hear a lot about that in React. Um, it's a way to help save on memory, things like that. So. What we're doing is importing a component here and rendering it to the page. That's kind of the beauty of React, is, it, is this modularity, this, this reduction of HTML and logic into single com reusable components. Then we have a div to wrap around uh, this little statement here. Anytime you see in React something wrapped in curly braces when inside of a render function, that means that there's some JavaScript logic going on. Um, so, we are using a JavaScript ternary, which is just an inline if statement, ternary operation to say, if there is a name in state, go ahead and render the application. If there's no name in state, render the login page, which is what we're seeing right here, right? So, state is stored on this main page here, and our initial state is just an empty string. This login card, if you guys open up a login card, all it is is a single card. That's so fast. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Hotkeys. Login.js though. Yep, logincard.js. So in here, we've got our render function, which is a paper object for material UI, it's just this nice little floating card, with a header and then a form. We've got our text field and our button on here. And what we're going to see here, which is, this is an important React concept when it comes to what we're going to be doing later, there's the idea of a controlled component. Those that have done React before, can someone, can, can someone explain a controlled component for me? Bueller? No? Cool. Con all a controlled component needs is that your component is tied to state. That means that when you change something on this component, for example, if I type my name John here, that means that in real time, the state of this component, which we have as name, is changing to John. And a, and a nifty way you can look at that is if you go to the Google Chrome store and download the React Dev Tools, you can go in and, ex and inspect. Instead of seeing what React spits out for you in raw HTML, you can see it in React Speak. So here is my login card component, and I have my state as John. Now, if I change this, go ahead and bring this over here. If I change John, you see that it's changing on the right-hand side. If I change it to Gov, it changes to Gov. Yes? Yeah. 
Isn't that kind of like Angular 2 way data binding? Yes, very, very similar. That's right. So it's just data binding to your state. And if I reference my state somewhere else, it changes it immediately. And it's a very important concept because what that, the idea behind React is that unlike jQuery or other JavaScript frameworks previous to Angular, they do not want you to change the DOM yourself. With jQuery, you go in and it provides you a lot of tools to change the DOM. With React, they don't want you to do that. They want you to change state and React will change the DOM for you because it's super efficient at doing that. So state is what we're gonna be working with here. Is, is state kind of like a globally accessible thing, like kind of like a session or something like that? Great question. It's State is actually based on the component that you're in. So login right here, we have login state, but do you remember on the main page, we had a, a name state as well, right? Notice, that's, that hasn't changed at all. And so the way that you do that is you pass state down via props. So if I type in my name as John here, which feel free to type your guys' name in. As the name changed, you're rendered a new page. This is like, you know, kind of mimicking a login page. Right, so now this has been changed to John. All right, in our main page component here, uh, I'm glossing over, by the way, I'm glossing over a lot of the stuff as to how this is done. You can see your handle submit, handle text change, all of that. Mainly because I'm not here to teach React, I'm here to teach about Firebase, and I want to just kind of get this up and running. But if you do have a burning question about it, feel free to ask, because I love talking about React. Um, anyway, back to main page, notice our state has been changed. It used to be an empty string, and now it is not, and that is because login card went ahead and called a function that we passed down. And so main page has now been changed. This.state.name is now John. And so because of that, any time in React your state changes, it automatically, automatically, um, ren it re renders that component. And what React does is React maintains a virtual DOM. It maintains a virtual uh, view of what your DOM will look like <coughs> side by side with what your actual DOM looks like. Now, I've been using that word a lot. Does everyone understand what DOM is? Does anyone not understand what DOM is? Just in case, don't feel embarrassed. It means document object model. That's what the HTML layout of your web page looks like. So React maintains a virtual copy of that, and as soon as your state changes, React re-renders it in its virtual side, and then it makes a diff between the two. Yep. So you can have the state of the application change each time, like like the two way uh, similar to two way binding. Then how do you know when to make your database calls actually save? Because every time they change the character of your name, you don't want to send up a new database call. But this is like an update for that for that state for that user. Absolutely, that that's a great point. And we're going to get into that when when it comes to hooking this up to Firebase. Okay. I think it mainly depends on how you bind it. If you bind out when the Buttons click, or you bind on whenever that particular thing has changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that's a great point. Notice in here. It's like on Blur, I guess, with uh, JavaScript, where if you change a letter in the input on Blur, you want to run, a, um, run the change. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want to listen to the time it does let that character change, then you just do it when you do the submit button. Yeah, and, and that, that is based solely on your application use case. So, for example, in here, I have this text field on the login card. If you guys refresh your page, it automatically clears out your state, and you can see this page again here. Um, this text field has an on change listener, which is tied to this handle text change, and that changes my local state. All right, so your state, now I'm not as familiar with Angular, and so I don't know if the Angular two-way binding is always tied directly to a data store or anything like that, but with state, it's local, right? So anytime I type a letter, my state changes. But as, it's as soon as, as Mr. Funk was talking about here, um, as soon as this button is tapped or touched, that's when I then trigger my store the data in the you know the main state, if you will. So, good questions though. These are great questions. So if I type in my name here and I enter that in, over here on the right hand side here, my main page component state is changed to John, right? And you can see that in a couple of these different cards. These are three different components I've got: an info card, my messages card, and an input card. So as I was saying before, when your state changes, it, it automatically triggers a re-rendering of that component. And so this render function was ran again, and it got to this if statement that said, Does, is there anything in this.state.name? And there is, which is this question mark, so it renders the application. What was previously happening was the else, which was rendering the login page. Cool? 
So, I've mentioned props before. Does someone that's familiar with React want to talk about props? Go ahead. I'm just understanding. My understanding is props is when you're passing, the state is linked to the particular component you're on. Yep. A props are what are used that you pass um, data to the next component, and that's what's carried over your props from the previous comp component. That's right. It's changeable. That's right, yep. And a good um, analog to that, if you're familiar with HTML, you have different properties on your HTML items. As you nest those within React, like you can set those, um, what you would know as an attribute in HTML with those properties. Exactly, great. And so that, you can see, my info card is rendering my name, but that is because I'm passing my name down into this info card and it's rendering that, all right? Now we're, we're running short on time here and we haven't even actually hit Firebase and so this has been a kind of a deeper dive into React. Um, but that, that's kind of what's all happening here. Now we're gonna be focusing on a, on a couple of main components in here, obviously. Right now you'll see this is just hard coded in here. This is just what our, uh, our HTML should look like once we hook this up and actually got some messages. Um, and then, so this component will need to be hooked up to Firebase, right? This component down here, which is separate, will also need to be able to make calls to Firebase to send new messages. So we're gonna be focusing our time on these two components. Now, before we hop into this, I wanna do a quick little, the last couple of slides that I've got here, I've got four more slides, are how we're gonna approach working with Firebase from a workflow stance. And it, it goes back to NoSQL. It's a backwards approach, all right? NoSQL in general, and for those that work extensively with NoSQL that feel differently than Sorry. Um, <laughs> relational modeling in general is what answers do I have? All right, it is model your data first, write the application later to make sure that your data modeling is pristine. I remember that when I was taking you know, the, the junior core class working on the project that we had then, it was making sure that your data model is great and then you write your application to meet those needs. Normalize that data in COD we trust, right? NoSQL is a little bit backwards. It's what questions do I have? It is optimizing your database through data denormalization to make sure that your application can query the fastest and most efficiently as possible to get your data. That means we're gonna have a lot of data duplication, especially in a chat application. That means that we're going to make sure that fast access is our top priority, and we're gonna iterate over our model. It's gonna be much more iterative uh, working with the same nodes in our model than it would be in a relational workflow, right? So, that is the end of my slides there. So let's go ahead and start iterating in that. You'll notice in your, uh, in your source folder here, there is a folder called Firebase, and in there you've got a data.json folder, or a file rather. So go ahead and open that up. And let's go through here. We're gonna do a little bit of process, we're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of, of dummy data creation here before we actually get back to our coding. You know, and so I said it was a totally backwards approach. I guess I lied. You need a little bit of dummy data to make sure that you're, you're on the right track, right? So, in a JSON model here, the first thing that you're gonna need to, going to need is to understand how it is that you're going to store your data when you have multiple copies of the same one. So you can think of this messages node as a messages table, all right? And so I guess we wanna be really, really good about it. We'll do it as a singular value, um, as a table value. John, I've got messages, threads, and users. Yeah, I pushed up a, uh, a new change to this. You can delete out the threads and users. That was my fault. I uh, didn't end up, I think that on the class day one branch, I changed this. You can delete out threads and users. We won't be doing that today. So make sure you just got messages. That probably means that you guys all have that as well. Um, and the way that we're gonna structure this is very similarly to, no dry erase, awesome. We're going to have, since we're running low on time, I'll just kind of dictate it. We're gonna have some kind of key, all right? Thinking of this as a, as a hash map, um, yet again, fast access. You guys have taken the data structures class. Um, if you haven't, you should. If you have, you remember that hash maps have very fast lookup access, right? We're gonna have some kind of key for each message, all right? And, and for dummy data's sake, we can even do this. Test message one, all right? And we'll, we'll have a test message two. Now when, when Firebase creates these keys for us, they're not gonna be as readable and pretty as test message one, test message two, but this is just for the sake of dummy data, right? So let's, let's uh, brainstorm together. What do we want to have stored in a, mess, in a single message row or a single message node? What is it that is going to be important for our application? Sender. Sender, all right, sender. So we're gonna have 
sender. And we'll just say for right now, test user. Now, the reason why I'm writing out test user, test node, all of that, is that we're going to use this file and we're going to import it directly into a Firebase database. Now, I sent this out a while ago. Did everyone go out and create a Firebase database or at least create a Firebase account? No. Cool. No. Okay, so they, they count, that's fine. We can do the database creation together. I wanted to walk you guys through that just in case you have any questions. But when you import a file, if you have anything in here that's like this or null uh, or anything like that, Firebase will immediately ignore that value and you won't see it in your Firebase anymore. They'll just pass over that and your node will not have that. And so for the sake of having accurate dummy data to be able to reference and be able to pull down, we're going to add in some dummy data values. So, test user one, what else do we need? With the message. Timestamp. Timestamp, so sent. We'll, we'll say uh, date sent. And to get accurate, uh, I've, ha I've had to do this a lot with my capstone for uh, timestamps and stuff. So if you pop over to a JavaScript console and you just say new date dot get time, That'll give you the timestamp for right now. And I found, and if anyone wants to argue with it, then we'll go to blows outside here, but I found that the best way to store timestamps in a JavaScript JavaScript based environment, so if you're using React or anything, is this timestamp, you know, integer value. Um, that's gonna be provide you with the most flexibility and the easiest way to store uh, in the long run. Yeah. Did you do that again? Yeah, so sorry, I kind of blew over that real quick. If you um, right click and inspect and open up your console, which you can do with the escape button, and then just type new date, so you're creating a new date object, and that date object has a method, get time. Get time will provide you with a, uh, a timestamp. Do you have to know, is that just, is the default get time just local time? Is it it's your computer's time, whatever okay. your computer's time is. If you're set, your computer's time zone is set to something wacky, it's whatever it's set to. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just like my, my call on that, like usually with relational databases, it starts like a date time format. With JSON databases, it's easier to store it as a millisecond because, because you can order by the number and you can extract dates from that pretty easily. Exactly, and we're going to be using a, a library that's very common in, in JavaScript development called Moment.js to do some easy displaying of those date values. So I'm not quite getting the date time. And actually, just as a reference, yeah, uh, you can click on console up top as well and get a full screen console. So if you click on console up, up here, then you should be able to get that as well. This is obviously assuming that you have Chrome installed. It's different on Firefox, different on Safari, different on Edge. Um, but you should have access to that. So what else will we need on this guy? Oh, also, um, if you go to the, if you open up the message uh, box.js component, if you want to reference that again, for this, uh, Let's see here. Oh, okay, yeah, never mind. I thought that I uh, changed that. Anyway, I'm going to change this since um, if you noticed in, in the message box, I've already written a little bit of logic. We're going to say uh, sent time. So let's change this to sent time just to keep accurate with that. What else do we need in our message? Message. Message, that's right. So. All right, there's our message. Anything else? Now remember, remember what our application is. This is just a chat room. So we don't necessarily need to worry about a, a receiver or anything at this point. This is just to a room. Anything else you guys want to add on right now? No, let's get moving. Let's get moving, all right. You had something that you wanted to say there. You want to add more information about the sender? We could. But the beauty of React is that we will, or sorry, about Firebase, is that we will iterate over that and add that later as needs be. So we'll go ahead and add this in here. We'll say this is test user two sent at, it'll be milliseconds apart. And we'll have two in here just for good measure. So pop over, everyone open up. Uh, if you've created your account and logged in recently, this should work, but if you type in console, Dot firebase dot google dot com. That's a shortcut that you'll get to your personal Firebase console, which will show your projects that you've got up. 
console and Firebase that Google has done. <laughs> <laughs> You should be able to create a new project. So I've already created one, but I'll go through the process of creating one with you. It's very simple. It's literally just this modal. That's it. So you'll click create a new project, and you'll give it a name. Whatever name you want. I named mine Colonial Messaging Service. So once that's created, <coughs> it should forward you to a page very similar to this. Yes. <laughs> Anyone have any issues? We good? Cool. We'll move on. So, what we need to do here first is we'll pop over to the, to the database tab. Uh, left hand navigation here, go to database. And what you're going to find is that. One thing pops up saying that your default security rules require your users to be authenticated. If anyone used Firebase, oh, I just my phone right here. You guys are totally just that. Um, anyway, if anyone used Firebase before Google bought them, the original default was for it to be totally open. When Google bought them, they said, I don't think so. They made their defaults to be that. So first thing we're going to do here is pop over to rules, which is a tab up top here. We're going to get into rules later. but. Just for the sake of this application test, we're going to change these values to true. Now notice, these were evaluating expressions. Auth is not equal to null. Can you guys see that? I need to zoom in. You guys good? OK. We're just going to say true for read and true for write, which means, technically, if someone were to get a hold of our Firebase credentials here and, uh, and be able to, to send this, um, they would go ahead and say, they would be able to add whatever they wanted to anything they wanted in our Firebase store, whatever data they wanted there, or mess up with it, which is not good, which is why we're going to talk about that later. But for, <laughs> for purposes of using this, uh, for purposes of, of this application demo, we're going to do that because you guys are going to help develop out your auth system later. So I click publish. Anything else you need to do to get those? Nope. That's right. And that is it. You just click publish, and then that is it. And go back to data. You can head back to data. So we'll go ahead and click this triple uh, dot icon here, the more icon, and we'll import a JSON file. You're going to browse to wherever it is that you have that file, which just find where it was that you, you cloned that repo, and it should be under your source Firebase folder. Once done, you should be presented with something very similar to this. Anyone have any issues here? Any problems, any snags? Yeah, we'll we'll do that again. yeah absolutely. So you're going to go here to data, click on import JSON. You're going to click on this browse button right here. And then just navigate to wherever that data.json file is. And you'll import that. You should see this change and move from there. Now, I was expecting this section of the class, this, this class time, to run a little over, uh, meaning that we'll talk, we'll finish up this portion next class period because Firebase security rules, it doesn't really take a huge amount of time. So it's okay if we don't finish getting it all wired up today. I figured that this would bleed over to next class period. Does anyone have any issues there? Yeah, you've got to have all the commas in the right place. Yes, you do. It, will, it, it needs to be valid JSON. And I'll have, this is open right here, but here you go. You can uh, have that kind of use that also. For those that have finished importing your JSON, congratulations, you're now Firebase experts. You guys can leave. Take my resume. Yeah. 
Jane, 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 I still have things to talk about, so don't leave. We have one more thing that I want to do before we uh, before we finish up here, um, and it's just the, the the rest of the prep work to, to start actually writing some JavaScript APIs, or rather using their JavaScript API. Okay, anyone still working on that? Cool. So, um, what you're gonna need to do is open your index.js file and notice that I have imported Firebase because I, as, an, as a node package, we've already installed the Firebase package. And I've got some code commented out here under initialize Firebase. All right, index index.js, that's right under source? Yep, that's right under source. It should be not in nested inside any folder except for source. And here, go ahead and uncomment those lines where you've got your config const and your initialize application call. All right, anyone not see that? Not looking good? All right, where is this file? It's index.js under the source file. You'll, you'll find it. I'll close some of these so you don't see this. Source index.js right there. Oh, I'm coming. Yes, uncomment that right there. And swing back over to your Firebase console and click on Overview. Top left here, right under the Firebase logo. And you're gonna click on this button that says Add Firebase to your web app. And you're presented here, and for anyone watching this video or anyone in this class, I'm assuming you can just hack my Firebase now. Um, here is your application-specific information. I want you to copy that, excuse me, copy that and paste it in right here. Are you using const instead of var? I am using const instead of var. ES6, it's baby. <laughs> Sorry, can you show me to get to that info? Yes, absolutely. So you go back to your overview page here, click on that, and then click on this far right little button, add Firebase to your web app. And here you'll have this. Now there's a lot of stuff in here that says like, okay, you'll, you're you're gonna. Th this is assuming that you're just going to, you know, paste in a CDN for the Firebase library, and then you have a script right here. But we don't need that because we've installed it via Node, and it is bundled with our React application. So we don't need to do any of that script any there. We just need literally just the innards of this object, this config object. Makes sense. So we should be able to save this, and at this point. Yet again, as I mentioned, every time you save, it triggers an automatic refresh of your page. Every time you change any code in there, and that's because when we ran npm start, it has run a file watcher. Go we'll here and then here. Just confirming the index.js initialize Firebase. Is that should that's just a comment? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Initialize Firebase. That's just a comment. This is okay. where you initialize Firebase. Do they have a semicolon in their example? They do. Um, Semicolons are optional in JavaScript. There are four instances in which you are supposed to use them. And if you're comfortable enough to know exactly where those are, then you're allowed to not use semicolons everywhere, which is nice. So I, you'll notice I don't have semicolons in mind. Feel free to add semicolons if you want. They're optional. I'll tell that to Dr. Little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I took his advanced web dev class and I remember. <laughs> Um, any other issues here? So when you save that file, you should be able to go back to your localhost 3000 and it should refresh, mm -hmm. and you shouldn't have any errors in your console here. It's a miracle. That's right. So you got you got a warning, which is totally fine, but you're now hooked up here. We got one minute left. All right. So we're gonna do something real real quick. <coughs> go over to messages box. All right. And you guys have this state is equal to messages. Cool. Go over to messages. Messages box. And, and in your component did mount, or actually at the top here, let's go ahead and import Firebase from Firebase. Under, in your constructor, under this.state, you're gonna say this.ref is equal to firebase.database.ref.child.message or whatever it was that you named in your database 
this. Mine is message. That's what we do there. It is. This has to be the exact title for how it was that this top level node looks. So what you're what you're doing when you say Firebase.database.ref, given that your initialization worked and you're connected to your Firebase through your, your API key, ref gets you to this point right here. And when you say dot child, excuse me, that will get you to anything underneath here. So if we still have the user and thread and things like that, we can say dot child, pass in thread, and we get to that node. That makes sense? There was a script on the modal that popped up that had all our configuration information. <coughs> Do we need to add that script? You don't. No. And, and the reason why is because um, Firebase, you see how we're importing Firebase up top here? Yeah. It's because we installed it via Node. So when we ran when you ran node install, we installed the Firebase package and it's already on our local machine. Okay. If you guys want to stay for one extra minute, you can test to make sure that you're getting your messages. If not, I understand we're over class time, so you can head out. This is Firebase is not defined. Uh, make sure at the top here that you've imported Firebase from Firebase at the top of your file. And what you're gonna do is say this dot ref in the component did mount. Component did mount is a built-in component lifecycle method for React. It's as soon as everything is kind of rendered, it's, it's generally the place that you should make any network calls. This dot ref dot on value, and then you're gonna do this fun little arrow function syntax. <coughs> arrow function is an ES6 way of doing an anonymous function. It's just like, it's just as if you were to say, function here, the only difference, which is a big difference, is that arrow functions do not implicitly bind the this keyword. And so arrow functions are a need for working correctly with Firebase. We're going to create a new method down here called update messages. And because React is React, you're going to need to add this line in your constructor when you add a new method. So, I'll tell you real quick what's going on here, all right? This.ref.on is the way that you set a Firebase listener, all right? You set a listener to this, uh, to whatever node you've, a you've accessed via this.ref, all right? Sorry, we're running a little late. Um, Check, John, we better probably cut out. There's another class coming in. Oh, okay, all right. So, when we get back here, I'll explain what's going on here next time we meet.